NVIDIA's 5000 series just got the leak mother load. I'm talking the 5060 Ti, 5060, 5070 Ti, 5090, tons of specs confirmed. It's all pretty wild, but before I get to that, new memory to make your Ryzen CPUs even faster and RX 8000 leaks. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, if you've seen my videos on the Ryzen 9000 series, you know that memory speed is very important for gaming, especially for Ryzen. But you can't go much faster than DDR5-6000 without going way faster to say 8000, because the memory frequency is at a 1 to 1 ratio with the memory controller clock at 6000. But anything over that puts it in a 2 to 1 ratio, meaning that memory controller clock gets cut in half, so you lose performance. But there's actually another way that you can can get a bit more performance out of your memory and that's by reducing your memory's own cast latency and that's exactly what Lexar just did with their new 32 gigabyte memory kit as you can see right here this one comes with a cast latency of 26 now for those who may not know most DDR5 6000 kits come with a cast latency of 30 and this may not seem like much of a difference but at least according to them you're actually going to see the most significant difference at the 1% low frame rates we're talking while in games but in fact, what's wild is that if this is true, according to the manufacturer, it's able to deliver an overall 10% improvement. Now, with that said, I will actually mention that they are apparently talking about the 9800X 3D chip here, and given the fact that that's already the fastest gaming CPU on the market right now, you likely won't get that much of a boost with other Ryzen CPUs, but it could at least be something that gives you just that little bit more. Still, I definitely suggest waiting for third-party reviews as well as the final pricing. Next up, I finally got a NOS, which is basically your own personal cloud server that stores everything locally. I'd actually been looking at getting one for quite a while, and Ugreen offered to send over their new 4-Bay NOS to sponsor today's video. See, I always have to try things out before I fully agree to a sponsor, but after using it, I was honestly pumped to do it. It's called the Ugreen NOS Sync DXP 4800+, Plus, and it's amazing. Not only is it built like a tank with these really cool toolless drive bays, but it was extremely easy to set up. You just follow the step-by-step -step guide and you're good to go. It also comes with a 12th gen 5 core Intel processor, so it's extremely speedy and can reach download speeds of up to 1250 megabytes per second. It also offers multi-user sharing and multi-device login with support for Android and iOS. And with 112 terabytes of maximum storage capacity, you'll have enough for anything you could want. Oh, and it even has an AI album assistant. Basically, it's got anything and everything you could want, and until the 22nd of this month, when you visit my link in the description below, you'll get 15% off. So visit that link before they're gone. And next up for today, as we get closer and closer to the launch of AMD's RX 8000 series GPUs, we're obviously going to get more and more leaks. And today, we actually have a couple very interesting ones, starting off with a new update from GPU-Z. This, of course, is software for your GPU, and as you can see right here, this actually talks about what it adds in terms of support and starting things off, you can see that it added support for Intel's ARC B570 and B580 Battle Mage GPUs. But obviously those have already been announced and the B580 is already out. But anyway, not only that, it also adds support for AMD's Navi 48. Now, for those who may not know, Navi 48 is set to be the GPU that makes up the higher end RX 8000 card, think likely the RX 8800 XT. And this of course confirms tons of leaks that we've seen of these GPUs in the past, especially given Navi 48 was leaked quite a while ago. But the RX 8000 news doesn't stop there because we now have a leak from the very trustworthy video cards, where according to a source from within PowerColor, which is of course one of the largest AMD board partners, the company will introduce a new GPU series for the launch of the RX 8000 series. You can see that currently they have several GPU brands, we're talking Devil, Hellhound, and Fighter models, and like they state, it's worth noting that with the RX 7000 series, PowerColor ceased launching its Red Dragon series. 
But while there is no actual information about those returning, they have learned that PowerColor is planning to launch new cards for the RX 8000 series, namely the Reaper series. And lastly for today, we have leaks and confirmation on the RTX 5000 series. This of course comes shortly after Nvidia teased the 5000 series release for CES. But really quickly, do you remember this video right here on Billy Billy? It was from a production facility for Zotac that was showing off a never before seen GPU. And in the title, it says 5090. But later on, Zotac themselves made a statement claiming that it wasn't the case, that it was a 4070 Ti Super. Well, that could potentially still be true, but it's clear that the company has been working on next-gen cards as video cards found a list of RTX 5000 GPUs listed on their sites. And as you can see right here, we're looking at the RTX 5090, 5090D, 5080, 5070 Ti, and RTX 5070. Now, while it does list all of these, that doesn't necessarily mean that these are all of the cards that they're going to be releasing at CES. I mostly think from leaks, we're more than likely most looking at the 5090 and 5080. Now they may announce those others, but they'll likely come later. Either way, it's clear that they are gonna be coming soon and that Zotac is working on them. Not only that, but when you look down here, they also added new filters to their graphics card category, specifically GDDR7 memory and 32 gigabyte capacity for obviously the RTX 5090. And of course, this confirms that the RTX 5000 series does in fact come with GDDR7 memory, which is of course another leak that I've discussed. And the 5090 does come with 32 gigabytes. And of course, if you love all things PC hardware news and you like being one of the first to get it, but you're not subscribed to GamerMeld, what are you doing? Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon. But the news doesn't stop there because WCCF Tech actually got new information about the RTX 5060 Ti and the regular RTX 5060. As you can see right down here, it says there have not been a lot of leaks regarding these two cards, but they managed to get some early details from their sources, which point to the specific memory configurations, the SKU variant, all of that good stuff. And we'll just go ahead and skip right down here to quickly go over that. Starting things off, you can see with the RTX 5060, according to this, unfortunately, it still comes with eight gigabytes of GDDR7. Not only that, but both the 5060 and 5060 Ti apparently still come with a 128-bit bus and memory speeds, at least they believe, bringing it to 28 gigabits per second for a total bandwidth of 448 gigabytes per second. Then with the uh, actual power connector, it's one 12 VHPWR connector. Moving on to the 5060 Ti, you can see that this one actually does go up to 16 gigabytes of GDDR7. Now, obviously the 4060 Ti comes with an option of eight gigabytes or 16, but according to this, it looks like Nvidia is gonna be making the 5060 Ti permanently 16, or at least originally they're gonna be releasing a 16 gigabyte variant. And it actually still doesn't stop there because as you can see right here, they also received new information for the RTX 5070 Ti. And like I said, we're just going to kind of go ahead and move right down here where you can see that according to this, the 5070 Ti comes with a whopping 8,960 cores. And what's interesting about that is that it's actually a pretty decent jump over the uh, current gen 4070 Ti. We're talking over a thousand cores. According to this, we're looking at a 16% increase. Not only that, but we're looking at 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 with a 256-bit bus. And according to this, we're looking at 350 watts, but I will actually say that Copite 7 Kimmy is somewhat claiming something differently. According to him, the latest data shows that we're potentially looking at 285 watts, which is not bad at all, given the fact that 350 is quite a bit of an increase over the current 4070 Ti, while the 4070 Ti comes with 285 watts, so it would basically be the same, but he does claim that the 350 watts 
is at least one of the configurations. So we're not 100% sure on that 350 watt part, but either way, it does look like at least a fairly decent boost. Still, this is the only thing he's correcting here, so the other specs are likely correct. And obviously, given how close the launch is, that's not much of a surprise. Oh, and really quickly, I am planning to attend CES next year, so make sure you really are subscribed so you can stay up to date with all these awesome releases. So while that does it for today, which GPUs are you most excited for? NVIDIA's RTX 5000 cards or AMD's RX 8000? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Ugreen's awesome new NOS down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.